you very much for being here. You've done many interviews together over your, your X-Men years. You've become close friends. I'd love to know something, a, a detail that you've learned about the other that maybe surprised you over time, personally or professionally. <laughs> <laughs> well, the first thing that springs to mind could not be spoken of here in, <laughs> in this setting. But su suffice it to say that we uh, shared a dressing room for 22 weeks when we were first doing Waiting for Godot. And London. indeed, f um, four weeks ago in Berkeley, where we, we uh, premiered our production of No Man's Land, we shared a dressing room again. And, it is an intimate um, setting because not only are we undressing and dressing together, but we're also bringing our stage life back into the room, and that can at times be a little tense and a little strange. But we do well, don't we? we do. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, it's, uh, Patrick, to, to the world can seem a rather forgive me, stern uh, <laughs> persona. You know, the man in charge, the man who knows how it's all going to work. Mm. Well, of course, the truth is he hasn't a clue. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's, it's the little pussycat inside Patrick which, which, which endears me. And the times when we giggle together and sometimes have to hold on to each other and say, are we going to get through it? You know, right. and uh, uh, it's, it's, that's, it's the, that gentle side of our friendship which uh, People might be surprised by that. <laughs> I saw both of you as Macbeth, and I wonder oh. how, much, uh, how much of Macbeth is in either of you, or if that's <laughs> not a bit. Well, I can assure you there's no Lady Macbeth in my life, but I... <laughs> <laughs> and my wife is in the audience, and so I... <laughs> OK. <laughs> we, we've never really discussed it, have we? Very I, little. I, I've, I've seen your Macbeth and admired it hugely. And, and I, I yours. Thank you. Well, uh, <laughs> but we've never actually talked about it, have we? We, we have not. I wonder why. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here's the offer. You will invite us back and we will talk about nothing but our experiences on Macbeth. We, we're on. <laughs> um, but in a sense, <laughs> however, um, Ian was in our production of Macbeth because one day we were rehearsing in the Royal Shakespeare Company's rehearsal rooms in Clapham and I had heard that Trevor Nunn's production of King Lear starring Ian was rehearsing downstairs. So I went in just to say hello and there was a strange atmosphere in the room. Um, and Ian uh, Trevenon seemed distracted, and then the stage manager said to me, well, we're in the middle of our first run-through, and Ian has disappeared. We can't <laughs> find him. We'd just taken a 10-minute break, but he's gone somewhere. Um, I went back out onto the street and saw several blocks away Ian wandering up the street towards me. He'd got a... I got a Danish pastry or something. In <laughs> I, and I, I, that's a kind of activity I entirely support, that you should take a break in the middle of doing King Lear to buy a Danish pastry. <laughs> um, anyway, he said, I, 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 right, I've heard you're doing the Scottish play. And I said, yes, right. He said, my dear, just one thought. Tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow, the important word is and. And I understood what he was telling me instantly. It was like a, a lamp went off in my head. Mm -hmm. And I gave that line, that emphasis, for the next year or yeah. so. And people continually commented on the unusual reading. And I continually, ah. of course, gave you the credit for it. Thank you. I, 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 we, we brought that production of Lear to uh, the Brooklyn Academy of Music, one right. of my favorite theaters in uh, this area. And, and uh, uh, King Lear, as you know, has a wonderful break. I mean, Shakespeare's very kind to his leading actors on the whole, and, and you, get, you get a 40-minute break, particularly with a, a modern intermission. And I used to take the advantage of, of, of lying down. Uh, more than that, getting under the blankets on the sofa in the dressing and going fast asleep, uh, mm -hmm. ready to be woken up by the dresser. Well, the dresser in Brooklyn wasn't familiar with the play, or indeed the, with my habit of doing this. <laughs> 
<laughs> so, uh, poor old Gloucester and Edgar were on stage waiting for King Lear to come back with the, uh, being all mad and uh, nothing happening in the wings at all <laughs> because King Lear was fast asleep in this dressing room. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. I, th they were about to stop the show and say something dreadful had happened when they suddenly heard clump, clump, clump coming down. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Did you I, have any... Oh, sorry, Ian, go uh, Ian does have one ability which I wish I could replicate. You can fall asleep <laughs> in an... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're looking at it. That's exactly what happens. You can be on the rehearsal room floor. A few pages go by and he hasn't had any dialogue. <laughs> it's so enviable. You and Winston Churchill. I have, I have, <laughs> I have fallen asleep on stage. I mean, um, <laughs> once in the middle of speaking. <laughs> Back in those Lear days, or at other points in your career, did you ever, uh, before you became such close friends, did you ever have a little envy for each other? Uh, oh, I, I, that's easy for me to answer. Um, uh, Yes, I'm sure there was a little envy and admiration because Ian was, um, I, I quote, no man's land was successful awfully early. <laughs> um, and uh, and uh, I mean, you were, as I understand it, you were a sort of a star at Cambridge in your university days. This was a name to watch out for um, before he, he came into the theater. I was still in the regions. I was in the regions for years once you had become a recognized star of British theater. And I saw Ian work as a young actor. He, of course, he still is, but y you, can, um, you can take it from me that he was perhaps the most gorgeous young man on the British <laughs> stage. Um, and that I envied, yes, right. because <laughs> I was not. Oh. <laughs> and, and, yeah. Wow. No, but you, you, you were a stalwart, and, and, and I, I don't admire anybody more than a person who is the stalwart of the Royal Shakespeare Company, mm -hmm. devoted to the idea of <coughs> doing great plays uh, uh, in an accessible way and devoting your life to it for very little money and an enormous amount of uh, effort and sometimes pain, and, and you, you were the model of that. And, and uh, when, when I saw him do... Uh, uh, Shylock uh, mm -hmm. on, on a transfer from Stratford in the uh, Little mm -hmm. Theatre in London. Uh, well, I, I never want to see the play again because uh, that was um, that was the performance. I, and I didn't come and see you doing it recently uh, for that reason. I thought, well, I've seen you do it. It's, mm. um, <laughs> it's probably better, was it, this time round? I don't know. <laughs> no, um, Different. I, I, I had hair this time round. <laughs> <laughs> what stood out to you about that Shylock, Ian? Do you, what do you recall? Well, that he was absolutely believable. And he was playing it uh, from his point of view. Mm -hmm. uh, the difficulty with uh, these uh, great parts that so many other people have played before is that you tend to think uh, that you've got to play it like everybody else has played it. Mm. There was a time when that Shylock was thought to be the comic part, and mm -hmm. you wore a red wig and trying to get laughs. Mm -hmm. uh, no, this, this, this was a perfectly, from his point of view, reasonable man, uh, pained, suffering, uh, and uh, partly because of his own personality, of mm -hmm. course. But uh, So it, it was just a, a fully rounded uh, character, and, and, and not just uh, someone who came on and, and pressed all the buttons that other right. actors had pressed. Repeat. You both had seen Gilgood and Richardson do uh, No Man's Land mm -hmm. in London. How much, uh, how much of those performances in your memory now or have they been? Give me the first line. <laughs> My first line, <clears throat> as it is. As it is, absolutely, as it is. <laughs> I, mean, you, I couldn't get Gilgood out of my ear. Mm. I could do the whole part exactly as he did it, you know. <laughs> and and that, that seems to be very much what Spooner's like. And I, mm. it, wa it was for him, and not for me, but a dreadful wrench. And I keep saying to Sean, now Matthias, our director, was I being Gilgood today? And he mm. said, no. Uh, so that's all right, but it's... Um, it's, um, they're indelible performances, really. Uh, mm. And, uh, but not for us to do. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. How could we? It, we were, it would be ridiculous. But it, well, it was, for me, a bit of a strain to forget that uh, and concentrate on Pinter. Mm -hmm. uh, 
I think we're all right now, but uh, it, it, it was hard going. Mm. Uh, I saw that original production three times in one week. Wow. And I would have seen it a fourth had I been able to afford it. Um, and I was overwhelmed by the play. It, the play is a masterpiece. Mm. It, uh, it has always been my favorite play of Pinter's, which says a lot because he wrote one or two pretty good plays. And um, I, I remember on one of those three occasions saying to myself when I left the theater, one day, one day I am going to do this play. Of course, I think like all actors, I imagined I would play Spooner because <laughs> Spooner is the showy role. Uh, he, it's a very, <laughs> it's, it's a very funny role, and and he talks a very great deal. God. But then it was only when we were sharing a dressing room, doing Waiting for Godot four years ago, and as I was getting to know Ian better and better, and working with him, it became clear to me that the role of Spoon had not been written for John Gielgud at all, but had been written for Ian McKellen. Mm. And although Ian genuinely was troubled by the idea that he would could only give an impersonation of, of Sir John. In fact, it's, it's nothing like that at all. I have one line when I deliberately copy Sir Ralph, because he had also, I, to see them both on stage was wonderful, because they were so distinctive in their style and manner. I have one line. Uh, I say, um, um, good Lord, did you really? <laughs> I say, which is <laughs> an echo of how the wonderful Ralph Richardson spoke. Oh. They had the distinction, those two actors, of turning down the first uh, English production of Waiting for Godot. Mm, really? Why? Well, they couldn't understand a word of it, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, but it wasn't the sort of play they were used to, and that, that's right. why the play was, uh, in many uh, areas, reviled uh, by... Uh, it was too different, too difficult. Mm. Uh, uh, therefore, But uh, the, the, the young director who had asked them was uh, Peter Hall, so when, I think it would be about 20 years later, the same director asked the same two actors to be in another new uh, and difficult play, um, Pinter's No Man's Land, they both immediately said, yes, yes, <laughs> uh, uh, not knowing that they were in for having a, w w one of the greatest uh, um, triumphs of their, of their careers uh, t t together. But I think it was because they turned down uh, Godot that they, uh, they said yes to No Man's Land. Mm.